Oh, that's a long way back, actually, because I, I mean, I've always drawn like a lot of kids, and you know, even into my preteens, was always actively drawing and doodling and stuff like this. But I always fashioned myself as a bit uh, more literary minded and uh, inspired by poetry and short prose, and I've imagined myself being a writer someday. But it was, um, I was on a curb and gutter contract uh, job with, um, well, I was in Vancouver and I, I ran into an old friend from Prince George, Doug Harl, and um, I knew he became an artist, but I hadn't seen him for ages because, you know, a lot of time had transpired in that time. And so I said to Doug, and I was tired of living in Vancouver anyway, and I said to Doug, I said, you know, I'm thinking of going to art school, where do you recommend? And he said, go to the Kootenai School of Arts. If you want to get out of the city, you got a good program and everything else. And uh, so, as it happened, I enrolled and was accepted at the Notre Dame University, which was a private university connected to the Kootenai School of Arts. And I did my first year there, and uh, unbeknownst to everybody, faculty included, uh, the university was really suffering financial uh, problems. And they announced during the first year of my education that they would be closing in the following year. So everybody was advised to uh, seek transfer to another university. And I transferred to UVic. And I guess my uh, education and my aspirations in more of the visual art uh, stream uh, came of that. that. That would be back in 1977. I do have a tendency to build a body of work around a certain thematic idea. And um, if I don't have one underway at any point in my you know, studio activities or whatever, I'll try to continue to be active by just doing sketches, you know, banal things like plants and still life objects and you name it. And um, so rather than sit around and wait for something to come to me so I can embark on a body of work, I'll at least work at my visual art um, in those interim periods. And sometimes some things that weren't anticipated in doing just a, you know, like a routine activity of drawing or taking a photograph or writing a note, uh, all of a sudden lead into something that's more, you know, uh, bigger than I would have anticipated. And that's where I take off from that point. Well, I'm, first of all, I'm a painter, and my medium is oil on canvas, and that's where the larger body of my work uh, is housed. I also uh, do a lot of paper works, and my preferred medium on paper is oil, or not oil, yeah, oil, I guess, to some extent, but primarily ink. And when I'm on the road or working out in the field, it's ink and watercolor. In my studio, I do ink and oil. But, uh, you know, working on, on location, it's watercolor and ink. And uh, I just want to say in passing that um, for the longest time, even though I draw constantly, I never really um, put a great deal of emphasis on the drawings as being the basis of ideas for compositions, because typically uh, a lot of my drawings take place after producing a canvas or a number of canvases, well, I'll draw from the canvas compositions. But in the last 10 years or so, I've been really uh, proactive in terms of doing a lot of work in the field, on location, that in turn has inspired uh, larger, so-called more mature works. I think that viewers should take away from my exhibition some uh, insight into the kinds of reference points that I've uh, utilized in terms of other artists' work, in terms of subject matter, uh, use of the materials, and so on. And um, if there's any inspiration that I would like the viewer to have upon leaving the gallery is uh, that which would be said to belong to the, not only the complexities of the field of art painting, but also to make them uh, appreciate that it's not a simple craftsman task. It's uh, much more dependent upon uh, looking, interpreting, and translating, and applying the learned part of one's worldly education into a practice uh, that one could call one's own.
like I do mine. 